Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 1035. This evening a certain young man was dying. He was suffering terribly. For his intention I began to say the chaplet which the Lord had taught me. I said it all, but the agony continued. I wanted to start the litany of the saints, but suddenly I heard the words, Say the chaplet. I understood that the soul needed the special help of prayers and great mercy, and so I locked myself in my room and fell prostrate before God and begged for mercy upon that soul. Then I felt the great majesty of God and his great justice. I trembled with fear, but did not stop begging the Lord's mercy for that soul. Then I took the cross off my breast, the crucifix I had received when making my vows, and I put it on the chest of the dying man, and said to the Lord, Jesus, look on this soul with the same love with which you looked on my holocaust on the day of my perpetual vows, and by the power of the promise which you made to me in respect to the dying and those who would invoke your mercy on them, grant this man the grace of a happy death. His suffering then ceased, and he died peacefully. Oh, how much we should pray for the dying! Let us take advantage of mercy while there is still time for mercy. I realized more and more how much every soul needs God's mercy throughout life, and particularly at the hour of death. This chaplet mitigates God's anger, as he himself told me. I find myself so weak that were it not for Holy Communion, I would fall continually. One thing alone sustains me, and that is Holy Communion. From it I draw my strength. In it is all my comfort. I fear life on days when I do not receive Holy Communion. I fear my own self. Jesus concealed in the host is everything to me. From the tabernacle I draw strength, power, courage, and light. Here I seek consolation in time of anguish. I would not know how to give glory to God if I did not have the Eucharist in my heart. My beloved native land, Poland, if you only knew how many sacrifices and prayers I offer to God for you, but... Be watchful and give glory to God, who lifts you up and singles you out in a special way. But know how to be grateful. I suffer great pain at the sight of the sufferings of others. All these sufferings are reflected in my heart. I carry their torments in my heart so that it even wears me out physically. I would like all pains to fall upon me so as to bring relief to my neighbor. Amid terrible torments, I fixed my eyes, I fix my eyes on you, my God, and though a storm is gathering over my head, I know that the sun is not extinguished, nor do I wonder at the deceitfulness of creatures, but I accept in advance whatever may happen. My lips are silent, while my ears are satiated with derision. I strive for silence in my heart, amidst the greatest sufferings, and I protect myself against all attacks with the shield of your name. An ardent desire for this feast is burning up my whole soul. In fervent prayer for the hastening of the feast, I find some relief, and I have begun a novena for the intention of certain priests that God may grant them light and inspiration to apply for the promulgation of this feast and that the Spirit of God inspire the Holy Father regarding the entire matter. The novena consists of an hour of adoration before the Blessed Sacrament. I have implored God to hasten this feast, and I have asked the Holy Spirit to inspire certain people regarding this whole matter. I am finishing this novena on Holy Thursday. March 23, 1937 Today is the seventh day of the Novena. 
I have received a great and inconceivable grace. The most merciful Jesus has promised that I will be present at the celebration of this solemn feast. Faustina was praying the chaplet for a dying man. It didn't seem to be helping, so she thought to pray the litany of the saint, saints, but the Lord encouraged her to keep praying the chaplet. Eventually, the man died peacefully. The chaplet is a very powerful prayer because we offer to the Father the perfect sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Let's remember to pray for the dying and especially the chaplet. Now, Faustina was in her room in the hospital, but then she says that she placed the cross that she wore from her perpetual vows on the person. So the Lord must have given her the gift of bilocation to be in her room in the hospital and in the room of the dying man at the same time. Faustina writes of relying on Holy Communion for her strength. Let's never take this great gift of God for granted. And she prays and intercedes much for Poland, her beloved homeland. God wants all of us to follow the example of this. Our countries need our prayers very much. Then Faustina is very compassionate and she suffers a great deal when she sees the suffering of others. So she takes on their burdens so that they can be freed from their pains. When she experiences trials, she fixes her eyes on the Lord. And she prays for the Feast of Mercy. It was proclaimed finally by St. John Paul II in the year 2000, 61 years after her death. So much prayer was needed. Now, of course, there were celebrations of uh, Mercy Sunday in an individual way, but John Paul II proclaimed it for the whole church throughout the world. And so she was present uh, on the feast in some way. We, we know she was, during her lifetime, there was an initial celebration, um, and she was probably present for that. But uh, no doubt she was present spiritually at St. Peter's, in Rome when uh, John Paul II proclaimed it as a universal feast for the whole church.